What struck me in the readings today was uh, this word know, to know Jesus. In the second reading and in the gospel, we hear this. In the second reading, we hear the way that we may be sure that we know him is to keep, keep his commandments. And then in the gospel, that the two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The importance of knowing Jesus, the importance of recognizing him, of knowing him moving in our lives, that this is so important. And we we come to say, how do we know Jesus? Well, we hear in the second reading from the first letter of St. John, we hear we know him by keeping his commandments. Now, a lot of times in our understanding, we think about law and love as two different things. You know, we see law, okay, do this, be rigid, make sure you follow the law or else. And then love is, oh, we can do whatever we want and we're fine. But that there was no di- dichotomy of law and love in the time of Jesus within the midst of the early church. And uh, it was to follow God's law was an act of love. It was an act of love of Almighty God. And so he says, keep his commandments. Now, what do we know his commandments to be? Well, first, Jesus said, when asked what the greatest commandments were, he said, the Lord, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. But then he gave us a new commandment at the Last Supper. This is my commandment. You shall love one another as I have loved you. So we keep God's commandments by loving God and by loving the people around us. It's not this dichotomy between law and love. Now, hard part is, do we keep his commandments? And that's a little bit harder. Uh, but he says, if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, uh, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, not only for our sins, but those of the whole world. We heard that last week, right, with the divine mercy, where we said, have mercy on us and on the whole world over and over and over again. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. That Jesus is able to forgive. But we look and we say, first... Are we striving to follow his commandments? Failing, yes, because we're weak, because we're broken. But are we striving to follow his commandments? That's first. And if, if in our failure we fall, we can turn to him and say, Jesus, help. Jesus, help. Forgive me. Wash me clean. And he says, I will. But so we enter into knowledge of him by conforming our hearts, our wills to him, doing as he would do, loving as he would love. And then in the gospel, as I mentioned, we hear about how these disciples recounted how Jesus was made known to them. The breaking of the bread. The breaking of the bread. What's that? That's, that's the Eucharist. So what had happened? We didn't hear this, but what immediately happened here, which if we're in year A, we would have heard it this weekend, about how these two disciples on Easter Sunday afternoon, they're walking away from Jerusalem off to Emmaus, and Jesus is walking with them, and they're saying... Uh, don't you know what's been going on? He says, well, what things? And they say about Jesus the Nazarene and all this stuff, how he was crucified. And somebody said they saw him alive. But yeah, that's, that's not really possible. And Jesus goes and breaks open the scriptures for them. And they say that their hearts were burning within them. And then they stop at Emmaus and Jesus looks like he's going on further. And they say, oh, stay with us. And he comes in and he breaks the bread. And they recognize him. And what happens? He disappears from their sight. Then immediately they they say, whoa, 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 whoa. What was that? That was Jesus. He is risen. Let's go back to Jerusalem. So they run back to Jerusalem, seven miles. That's not a bad run for a day. And he goes, they go back and they say, we've seen him. And then he appears again. Now to all the disciples. He was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This important thing that when we say we need to get to know Jesus, we're talking about something that's present. He is risen from the dead. It's not like he's just some historical figure. He is here now present. He is alive. And so much so, he says, he goes to the disciples and they're like all freaking out. He says, do you have any bread? Do you have anything to eat here? And they give him some fish and he eats and says, look at my hands. Look at my side. Look at my feet. 
see. And they go and look. Oh, look, those wounds. It's really him. They touch. He eats, his, eats fish. And I guess the ghosts can't eat fish. I, I, I don't know. I've, I've not done that, that research on ghosts. But they, he eats fish. And they say, wait, he's really here. This isn't some uh, imagination. He's really here. He's really alive. And he ascended to heaven so that he could then spread his presence to the whole world at all times. So that we know we can know him here and now. And when we come here to this altar, what happens? Bread and wine become the very body and blood of Jesus Christ, our God. He is alive. He is present. With that story on the road to Emmaus, when he breaks the bread, he takes, blesses, breaks, and gives, and he disappears from their sight. Why did he disappear from their sight? Because now he was present in the Eucharist. He was no less present, but present in a different form, in a different manner. He was here. And our God is still here and he's saying, I want you to know me. I want you to know me. To know my love. To know how I'm transforming you. He's calling us into this intimate relationship. To know him. To be known by him. The word know is not just about knowing about something. The Greek word of knowledge here is not about, you know, being able to master an external reality. It's not like the knowledge that Steve has of how to play the piano. Right? It's about knowing a person. It's about knowing a person. Having that intimacy with Almighty God. As you know your husband, your wife, your children, your parents, as you know your friends, God is saying, I want you to know me in this way. And he gives us the opportunity by spending time with him in the Eucharist. Do we strive to know God by keeping his commandments, by spending time with him in the Eucharist, This is the call of the risen Christ. Come into my heart. Get to know me and be known by me.